Hi everyone, this is Editing Jen. If you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Jen. I'm an author and a book reviewer. I just wanted to quickly insert this clip. This video was actually gonna be part of a longer reading vlog and I just sat down on one of the days and started talking and ended up talking for quite a long time. So I decided I would isolate it and make it its own video. And not just for that reason, but also because today I realized that Charco Press, which is an independent publisher, is having a 40% off sale. And I decided to purchase some books. So I'm gonna talk to you first uh, about wigs and styling wigs, and there's a bit of disability chat, and then we're gonna purchase some books on their website. I'm not affiliated with Charco Press in any way. I just love independent publishers. So I thought I would take you along on some book shopping. And the sale that they've got on ends on Sunday. So I thought I may as well upload this today in case you wanna make use of that sale too. Cause if I upload it later, then it's a bit pointless for you. And that's not fun. So yes, there was no intros to this video before I filmed this bit because it was, as I said, gonna be part of a reading vlog and now it is its own thing. So uh, yeah, let's have a chat, let's catch up, let's buy some books. That's it. Good morning. This is not a book update bit. This is a wig chat and wig experimentation and just general chat. Um, it's a Friday, I have a hospital appointment this afternoon in the center of town, so I thought I would take you along not to, to the hospital bit, but because it's the only time I get to see the centre of town and the hospital is right on the Thames and that's nice. So, you know, we're gonna have some, I was gonna say artistic shots of the Thames. It's not gonna be that, but you can you can have some shots of the Thames. Um, and before I go, I wanted to experiment with wigs. Essentially, I have so many thoughts and things I would like to say about this that I don't really know where to start. And it's this feeling, this need to over explain everything, which um, I think other disabled people and chronically ill people will perfectly understand because we're asked to do that quite a lot. And also doing this segment just to follow through on these thought processes. I know that there's gonna be some people watching this thinking, Jen talks a lot about disability these days. And I have to say, I don't. The amount that I talk about it compared to like life and, and how much it interacts with my life, I really don't talk about it very much at all. And that's not something that I want to have a gold uh, star for at all. But it is something I just wanted to mention because we reward people for not talking about disability. And obviously no one likes a moaner in life. But what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that disabled people, if they're talking to you about disability or trying to have a conversation about access or care or hospitals or just whatever, I promise you that they are showing you like a couple of percent of how much it impacts their life. Uh, and you know, how much, how much they have to think about something and the emotional, physical, whatever impact of that. And then saying that, I'm like, oh, that evokes or invokes pity. I'm like, I don't want pity either. I'm just <laughs> trying to illustrate like how ridiculous it is that if I want to talk about this, these are all the thoughts that go through my head. It's like, I want to be honest about things, but I don't want to be too vulnerable because then people can weaponize that. What was I even saying? Okay, so yeah, I have this appointment today and I've been thinking about it all week as I've been working. Just, you know, some hospital appointments, fine, whatever, but some of them are obviously more emotionally or physically weighted than others. Physically weighted, that doesn't sound right. Um, and more important, you think about them more. And it was interesting because I was having a conversation with Mr. M about hospitals and doctors and his relationship with hospitals is so different to mine. Like, I'm not scared of hospitals and I'm not scared of doctors. Like I have spent so much time in hospitals over my life that I think you either have a really strong adverse reaction to hospitals or they're just not a comfortable place to be, but just like a, not a second home either because that's really cliched and inaccurate, but just a place that you really understand. I, so I really don't mind being there and I am very happy to be around doctors but I think a lot about how I present myself to doctors and Mr. M doesn't think about this at all. <laughs> um, he's, uh, I think there's lots of different things that like he is a, a white man, uh, but also he is more importantly <laughs> not disabled and just has never been in that situation before where he has been 
looked at by doctors in a certain way. There is a tree surgeon on the street and I'm really hoping it's not that loud. I'm sorry if it is. I guess like going to doctors has always been a bit strange because I never know what they're going to say. I often, or at least it feels like, I often go for, for one thing. And this has certainly been true at pivotal moments in my life where I've gone to a doctor and I think, okay, well, we're reaching the end of what we needed to do like operation wise or treatment wise or whatever and then they'll just find something else and they're like okay this is a whole new journey that we have to start on and it's just never ending and of course it's never ending because that's just how it how it's going to be but I think there's always a bit of oh what's going to happen what are they going to say <laughs> what new thing am I going to be told and also just how certain doctors look at you ones that i've been to for a long period of time are fine but meeting new doctors and consultants you never really know if you're going to be patronized or if you're going to be respected it just means that when i go to appointments i really th take the time to control aspects that i can control so i think a lot about you know how i'm going to get there and what I'm going to wear, which may sound vain, but we all have armor. We all have armor, and I think that that's perfectly fine. Um, and I'm not even saying really that it's armor against doctors so much, though that is in part what I mean, but I mean like the getting there and uh, being on the tube and stuff, and you know, as I've mentioned before, sometimes I get people saying not very nice things to me about my hands, so it's like I want to, like I, I've said before, I don't really want to pass for a non-disabled person, and, and I don't, but I also want to not attract loads of attention when I'm feeling particularly vulnerable, you know? And <laughs> something that I have uh, found that is that mask wearing and wigs, it's interesting. <laughs> Uh, Mr. M and I um, went for an appointment just before Christmas and uh, I took my mask off when we came outside of the hospital because we were going to go for a walk and I hadn't realised that the back of the mask strap had caught on my wig so when I took off the mask just my wig came off too and I was like great cool like it was just one of those literally like comedy moment sketches I was like great excellent well done me so I was thinking that um I want to see if I can make any of my wigs updos because that's actually just something I miss about having lots of hair actually is is wearing my hair up because I just used all I used to do with my hair was wear it in a messy bun that's it um and I and I miss that but because I have like cheaper wigs I think I think I'm guessing with more expensive ones it's easier because they come with um more baby hairs but if you have cheaper wigs it's just that they're, they're all one length and you kind of have to make those hairs yourself because obviously if you put them up and it's just a line at the back especially if you can see the lining it not only looks a bit strange but isn't very secure anymore uh, and your wig is more likely to come off so i was having a, a play around with this wig here and putting it in in a bun so I'm going to play around with it this one's quite good because it does have some shorter hairs at the back and I'm going to play around with this one and my peach one and my blonde one and see what I can I can make see if we can come up with something I also feel like I just word vomited at you and I don't think that I've explained myself very well at all I guess I'm just trying to highlight things that maybe you wouldn't think about with regard to disability, you know? It's not just the going to the hospital appointments as in the time that that takes, but just all the things you think about that are tied into that. And that's me speaking as someone who is not, for instance, a wheelchair user, trying to get to hospital appointments and thinking about access is like a whole other, a whole other thing. And I was going to, I had been thinking about filming a series of videos, well, one video that I would put together, like documenting the IVF, the PGD IVF that Mr. M and I are doing at the moment, which is not an appointment that I have today. Like I just have a, a normal hospital appointment, but I realized I can't do that. Like I started filming it and I wanted to do it just because I think it's really helpful. I find watching those videos really helpful from other people, but I started doing it and I realized I absolutely couldn't. So that video will not be existing. Um, 
because it's just I think it's that thing of me saying there are so many thoughts in my head and so many things that I want to say on this subject but expressing them all puts me in a really very exposed position I mean my first meeting about doing PGD IVF was five years ago so it's already been a really long time and we're nowhere near I'm not about to suddenly stand up and go by the way secretly I'm pregnant like that's not where we're at. So, um, yeah, it's been five years and then we've had to have meetings about, uh, funding for this because the NHS does offer funding. And the questions that I had to answer during that uh, about disability, like how will I parent? What would I do if, when my condition like changes, have you considered all of these things? I mean, at least the people asking the questions had the good grace to look really embarrassed about needing to ask these questions. It's, it's something that really needs to change the way that we think about so many things to do with disability, but I'm just like disabled people parent and disabled parents exist and any person could become disabled at any time. Are these really the questions that we need to be asking people? I, I agree that all of these things are things that we as individuals should think about, like what can impact what, but obviously I think about those things, as does every disabled person. To insinuate that we don't is, is the ridiculous thing, I think. It's like, I'm sorry, have you thought about yourself and your condition? It's, it's so othering. And I just didn't know how to talk about that as well as everything else in a video without just basically feeling like I was standing naked in front of a camera. So I'm not going to do that video. Um, at least I, I don't plan to. I have no plans to do that video now. So I'm just going to get, we're just going to get on with that stuff and uh, see where it takes us. Anyway, let me, let me sort out this wig and see if we can do some updos. Okay, so step one, I have thrown it up into a bun. This one has a really bad lining at the bottom, so I've put this to cover it and hopefully to hold it down more. Because obviously if you're lifting, this one's really quite long this week, if you're lifting up a lot of weight, it does destabilize the wig somewhat. Um, and it's hard to pin a wig in place if you don't have loads of hair underneath because obviously the clips need to connect to something and whilst I do still have about a third to half of my hair that's quite painful if you just stick hair pins into you know <laughs> bits of skin so I'm not going to do that but I, okay and then I'm going to try and see if I can cut these bits to shape them to be smaller so that it looks more natural because you would have uh put hair everywhere you would you would have shorter bits around your face as opposed to just all your hair being this length. That's that's not how hair works. Okay, I'm now absolutely covered in hair. I might have to change this jumper. I'm so covered in hair. But basically just ran some scissors down it to try and make some wispy bits. I tried. Let's see if it's easier to wear a mask like this than when it's down. It's upside down. Well done, me. There you go. I mean, a hospital appointment in November I had to go to and I was wearing a mask like this, which obviously takes up most of my face, uh, a mask, uh, a wig, a hat to keep the wig on and an eye patch. It was a look. I just got a call to say that my hospital appointment has been cancelled or needs to be rescheduled because staff are off sick. So glad we had this conversation. <laughs> so much waste of emotional energy and then the impact physically on things getting rearranged as well, which is nobody's fault at all because, you know, this kind of thing is to be expected right now. But it just all, it's just all cool. Okay, so I'm gonna get back to work then because I'm not going into town, so I can't show you the Thames. And then I'll have this existential crisis next week when it gets rearranged. Good. Good to chat. Okay, goodbye. Hi, it is later. I was going to include that segment 
before in a reading vlog that I'm filming at the moment, but then I realized that's actually really quite a long segment. I think it was about 15 minutes in the end. So um, I'm gonna put it as just a video today. But the other reason I wanted to put it up today is because I realized that Charco Press are having a sale. So earlier this week, I uploaded a vlog where I was reading all of the books that were long listed for this year's Barbellion Prize. And my favorite book out of all of those was Eleanor Knows by Claudia Pinheiro, which is published by Charco Press. They currently have 40% off all of their books until Sunday. So um, I thought I would mention that in case you want to go and, and purchase the book. Um, and they have free UK delivery and half price delivery on worldwide shipping too. So it, it's a pretty incredible sale. So I <laughs> did go on the website and I thought I would tell you what I purchased because I purchased, how many did I buy? Let's see. I bought one, two, three, four, five, six books for £35, including shipping, which is pretty incredible so I thought I would show you what show you what I've purchased so I'll put the um I'll put the what's the word book covers why did I forget that word the book covers on the screen and I'll tell you what I have decided to pick up um you can browse their website see if anything takes your fancy uh, all of the stuff I think or well, most of the stuff that they publish is from South America and I really do want to read more work from South America the first one I purchased is called The Rooftop by Fernanda Trias translated from the Spanish by Annie McDermott it doesn't say which country this author is writing from on the page but once I've got the book I'm sure I can find that out um but this one is about a house that is falling apart and Clara is with her father and her daughter Floor in a dark apartment trying to protect herself from what's outside it says that it is Kafka-esque it's about instinct civilization and taboo the next one that I bought is called Boyobu by Ida Vitale. It's translated by Sean Manning. And I know that Boyobu is in a, a Japanese word. It means wind wall or a folding screen. This book I purchased because it sounds a little bit like Piranesi, like the surreal bits of Piranesi. There is a story, reads the opening sentence, speaking existence into the swirling, unclaimed adventures, waiting for us to notice them. It's taking you through 97 years of observations, discoveries, realizations, confessions, from earthworms to toads, chrysanthemums to butcher's brooms, stoplights to crossroads to memories and misunderstandings. It just sounds very bizarre, very fragmented and... I was intrigued. The next one that I purchased is called A Perfect Cemetery by Federico Falco, translated by Jennifer Croft. This is a collection of short stories and one of them is set in a blizzard. Some, For some reason that immediately drags me in. Also reminds me of Shelter, the beginning of Shelter. It says, in the middle of a blizzard, a widow is looking out at the ruin of her late husband's garden when suddenly she sees a woman running naked in the falling snow. And I was just really really intrigued by that next one is one that i have heard about before and it's called dead girls by selva almada and I, it's translated by annie mcdermott and this is about femicide and i think it's going to be like gary young's book another day in the death of america because it's a true crime book that looks at the lives of in this case women who have been killed really respectfully telling their stories to highlight wider issues if you haven't read another day in the death of america then i really really recommend that the, are we on to five? How many did I say I bought? The next one I bought is called The Adventures of China Iron by Gabriella Gabazon Gamara, translated by Fiona McIntosh and Iona McIntyre. This one just sounds a bit ridiculous and I'm here for it. It says, this is a righteous romp taking the reader from the turbulent frontier culture of the Pampas deep into indigenous territories. It charts the adventures of Miss China Iron, Martin Fierro's abandoned wife, in her travels across the Pampas in a covered wagon with her newfound friend, soon to become lover, a Scottish woman named Liz. I, it just seems uh, <laughs> a lot. And I was just like, okay, I will try that. And then the last one that I purchased is called The President's Room by Ricardo Romero, translated by Charlotte Coombe. And again, it doesn't say what it has been translated and from. I don't know if all of these are translated from Spanish or if some of them are translated from Portuguese, etc. I, I, I don't know. I'm actually not that familiar with this press. 
So it says this is set in a nameless suburb in an equally nameless country. Every house has a room reserved for the president. No one knows when or why this came to be. It's simply how things are. And no one seems to question it apart from one boy. I was just, again, intrigued by that premise. So those are the books that I have picked up. I thought I would include that as part of this vlog which is going up today because if you would like to take advantage of that sale you can and they also have ebooks on sale as well and um, so yeah i guess this was a little get ready with me wig styling chat about things and also come book shopping with me online a little friday video for you i hope that you're all doing okay and thank you for spending time with me if you are new here and you haven't subscribed and would like to that'd be very nice links in the description box down below to um Chaco press um and that's it is it i feel like i've forgotten to say something but you know i think i always feel like that all right i hope that you all have a good weekend and i will see you very soon sending lots of love bye